Do you see that the North is in as much disarray as we have in the South, if not worse? When they were grooming and breeding these terrorists, they thought they were doing it just to assume political power. They never knew there was another dimension to it. That these terrorists that they all created will come back to consume them. And that is what is happening today. It is the spillover of their same, should I say, terror effects that we are feeling right across the South. That was why we said with the launch of ESN that we cannot allow that nonsense to continue. They know they, have, they are not going to make any headway in the East. They have turned their attention to the West. They are forcibly occupying their land and telling them that they cannot do anything about it. A whole presidency in a country openly and brazenly supporting terrorists. All of you watching and listening all over the world, you know that Miyeti Allah is a terrorist organization. You know that. They have killed. They have said that Benue State is theirs for the taking as a spoil of war. All of you are aware of it. You know what they are doing. Anywhere you have Fulani headsmen, terrorists for that matter. They tell you, oh, they, they, are, they are pastoralists. They are, they are allowed to do their businesses in the forest. All of you are aware of it. But you kept quiet, hoping that somehow Tinubu will emerge as the president, or an Igbo man will come as the president, and your family will start enjoying. But in the meantime, you have no more farmlands, you have no more forests, you have nowhere you can call your own home. The same stupidity exhibited by, by Hausa peasants that enabled Fulani to take Sokoto from them, that enabled Fulani to take Katsina from them, that enabled Fulani to take even Kanu from them. Every Hausa land is occupied either by a Fulani MA or a Fulani governor. Some of you don't want to reason, you don't ever, ever learn. That the main aim of Fulani is to conquer your land and enslave you. Look at how some people today, as I wrote yesterday, they are worse than a discarded tissue paper. They are worth nothing. Only their language is what is relevant in their lives. Everything else is lost. All of you are repeating the exact same mistakes that the house has made. That is why they are in trouble. And that is why they can never ever come out of it. They are all suffering from what I would, an advanced version of the Stockholm Syndrome. Can you imagine that these people came into their land and took it over and they cannot do anything about it? Hausa is gone. It took Fulani very many years before they came out of their shell to say we are Fulani. Remember before, many years ago, they told you we are Hausa Fulani. We are Hausa Fulani. We are, because that time, their, uh, their subjugation of the Hausa race hasn't been completed. Now they have completed it. Have they not completed it? And what is happening right now? I ask you what is happening now. Fulani have now come out to tell you we are Fulani people. Is that not what they are saying now? They are not telling you we are Fulani. No more Hausa Fulani. What does that tell you? That the Hausa race no longer exists. Do you want the same thing to happen to you? Do you want the same thing to happen to your families? To your villages? Do you want your towns, let's say Obomosho, to be renamed into a Fulani name? Do you want Tonesha to answer a Fulani name? Forget all the nonsense about unity of Nigeria. All they are uniting against is your common interest. Unless you prefer epileptic um, a power supply, unless you prefer to live your whole life without running water, unless you want to live in abject poverty and deprivation, your only alternative is a revolution. Let nobody discourage you. All the countries of the world doing very, very well, they all went through a revolution. You must go through it. If you don't go through it, you can never ever survive. As a people, Fulani will take you over. As simple as that. This very day, we are making it known to the whole world that the Muslim extremist dictatorship masquerading as a secular democratic government must be demolished. It must be demolished for you to survive. They have to be demolished. If you do not demolish them, your lives will end very, very miserably. I assure you. I assure you. The zoo is on its knees. Everybody knows that the zoo called Nigeria is on its knees. Who doesn't know that? 
Everybody knows. Nothing is functioning. You are all aware of it. When they say go and register for NIM or whatever NIM or whatever rubbish is called, all of you trooped out without legislation, without any laws. Fulani can control you however they like. Once they announce it, Yoruba newspapers very foolishly and stupidly will support them because they want Tinubu as the president. And you are all dying every blessed day. You are all dying every day. Had you people risen up to say that what is happening in Nigeria is bad, there is no way that Pa Fasorenti's daughter will not be alive today. That is the price you pay for duplicity. That is the price you pay for treachery. That is the price you will continue to pay until you rise up and say enough is enough. It is up to you to do it. You did it during NSARS. You can do it again. Can you imagine Fulani people telling you, if you remove Fulanis from Yoruba forest, imagine Fulani telling you, if you remove them from your ancestral lands, there will be war, and you are panicking, and you have not asked yourself, why are they not saying something about the East? Why did they not say to Eastern Security Network? Why did they not say to me, if you don't stop evacuating Fulani terrorists from the forest, there will be war? Because they know they understand psychologically that you don't have what it takes to resist them. Do you know why Brony State is still alive? Why you still have the Kanuri people in Brony today? Was because they resisted the Fulani centuries ago. You have to go back to history to understand how Nigeria came into existence. Fulani has been expanding from day one, from Senegambia. All the way from Senegambia, they've been expanding, 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 and now they are in Okiwe. All the way from Senegambia, they are now in Okiwe. And you're asking us to somehow fold our hands and keep quiet because of 2023, because one idiot is going to come out to become a president because of that rubbish, because of that nonsensical notion we should fold our hands and wait until we are overrun by the Janjaweed from the Sahel. Is that how reasonable people think? Is that how people that wish to survive as a race, is that how they reason? It is very, very shocking that some of you do not understand what the fallen is have in store for you. Very, very soon it is going to happen. And when it happens, your eyes will clear. And about whom you will see it very clearly. I was warning you in 2014, 2015, 2016, they said he's a warmonger. He's a, he's a warmongering. I went to America and I told World War Congress that this war you are avoiding is going to come to your villages. They said, no, it's not going to happen. What is happening today? When Yoruba was supporting this, the dead idiot called Buhari, did I not warn them that this evil you are supporting will consume you? They never listened. They never wanted to listen. IPOB is a terrorist group. You are trying to divide Nigeria. But Mietiana is not. People that you are calling bandits, they, who, have you heard anybody come out to say, please, Buhari, since presidency is there defending terrorists in the forest, why don't you proscribe them? No, you cannot proscribe a Fulani group. Never. And all of you, we are supporting evil. When there is a, the proscribed IPOB, proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, these are Yoruba journalists writing junk. Every day they keep writing rubbish. But their land is under siege. Their land is under siege. And the Fulani will take it. It doesn't take time. So I am here today to encourage them that they must stand tall and be very strong, resolute. That is what Fulani does. They control the media. They have well-paid consultants all over the world doing their bidding for them. They have that, uh, that uh, woman at UN trying to, to, to lobby the world that everything is okay in the zoo called Nigeria. But you and I know that the zoo is not okay. You and I know the game plan of the Fulani. And what are you doing about it? Nothing. Every day you read, you lament, you complain. Every day you read, you lament. And that's all you do. That is all you do. You read, you lament, you complain. You do nothing about it. Your lives are being taken away from you. Your forests are being occupied. Your mothers are being raped. Your daughters are being abducted. And the whole national government, presidency, is supporting such people. And you're telling me that Nigeria is viably sustainable. Is that what you're telling me? That somehow this contraption is sustainable, it is viable. It can never be. Because the more you stay in one Nigeria, 
the more you are inviting the Fulanis to take over your ancestral lands, to take over your villages, and to make life a misery for you. That is the end game. That is the outcome. If you doubt me, go and do a bit of research. Ask yourself, who are the Hausa people? Who are the Nupe people? Who are the Bachama people? All of these people were steamrolled by the Fulani march to the, to the Atlantic Ocean. And now they're in Yoruba land. They're in their forests. They are in their forests. And who is going to drive them away from there? If not the Yoruba youths. Forget about your, your useless governors. Your elders are very strong. I love Yoruba elders. The way they behave, the way they talk. Very, very strong. They said they support Akere Dolu. There's the governor of Ondo State. They support him in what he's doing. People must come out to say that enough is enough. When you travel to the north, do you live in the forest in the north? The Igbo people are in Sabangeri in Kanu. Are they living in, 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 in uh, how, of course, it's house land. Are they living in the forest? They came to the town. They work very hard. They build houses. They build mansions. They develop the entire place. Is that not what they do? What are Fulani people doing in our forest? Nobody can answer that question. They say that they're pastoralists. I want some of you who, some of you have had your breakfast this morning. Please go to your fridge or go to where you keep your, your beverages and you will see pig milk. Pig. Some of us, we are raised on pig milk. For how many years now? And uh, you keep asking yourself, what is pig milk? Pig milk is mineral the same, the same milk that the cows produce in Holland can be produced in the zoo. Tell me the country in the world aspiring to be a member of the UN Security Council where you move cattle from place to place. Are you people, are you people well at all? You so-called Nigerians, are you, are you normal in the brain? I'm asking you a simple question. Show me a country that aspires to be in the 21st century moving cattle from place to place. Tell me they're grazing. Which country is that? Please tell me. Some, all of you don't have any shame. When you have people, an entire presidency coming out to defend a very primitive, archaic agricultural practice, then you know you embrace your mess. You are in one almighty trouble, I'm telling you. You people are in a mess. The Holland that you get your pig milk from, do they move cattle from, from Rotterdam to, to, to Amsterdam? I'm asking you a simple question. But they produce the pig milk that you're drinking every blessed day. Why can't Fulani produce pig milk in, in, in Sokoto? Why can't they produce carnation milk in Kanu? They have the cattle. Before the white man came, did you see any Fulani in your forest? All these people talking rubbish about uh, movement of cattle and movement of... I'm asking you, before Britain came and handed over Nigeria to Fulani, ask your grandfathers, please, or your grandmothers. Ask them. All this nonsense we are hearing today in this so-called one, I want to tell you the dangers of one Nigeria. All this nonsense you are hearing today about one Nigeria, Fulani in, in our forest, Fulani in our village. Before the white man came, did you see Fulani moving their cattle all over the place? Did we not have meat to eat? They will answer these questions for you. Because sometimes in Africa we don't reason very well. The way we reason is disjointed. It is disjointed. I, don't, I can't understand for the life of me why instead of them to waste all that money arming and equipping this Janja with army Mihetiala to come and conquer you and I. Why don't they open a milk factory somewhere in the north and bring the milk? down south i'm sure i'm sure southerners will buy it after all pig milk comes all the way from holland pig milk all the way from holland now you understand it because of the way you people reason why can't you produce is it difficult to produce milk the same milk that comes out naturally from the order of the of the cow why can't you put it can it somewhere process pasteurize it and send it to people to 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 to, to, to eat to drink or to do whatever with all over the world, that is what is happening. In fact, they produce so much milk in Europe that they throw it, they pour it away. Why can't you do the same thing? A whole president claiming they are in the 21st century are supporting a very primitive practice of moving cattle from place to place. All of you, you're not ashamed of yourselves. You have no shame. As somebody will say, your shame is shaming me. You know, no, no, I'm telling you, you people from the zoo, I'm ashamed of your ignorance and stupidity. You people are hopeless, completely hopeless. One day now, one idiot to come and say, we are, we are intellectuals. And you're moving cattle from Kafanchan to, to, to Ahoda. You, you, you are intellectuals. You are intellectualizing. You are in the 21st century, you are moving cattle, driving cattle, Nama. 
from over 300 buyers. It's claiming you, you, Yoruba, Yoruba Forest is a place for you to be in. You want to relax, Yoruba Forest is your, every Nigerian is free to live anywhere. Uh, and do their business anywhere, yes? But when an Igbo man tries to sell beer in Kanu, you destroy it. You destroy their, uh, their businesses, you destroy their hotels, but you can come down to the south and live anywhere you like and grace anywhere you like. And you're telling me that is a country, that is one Nigeria for you?